What if I was to tell you that the universe is mostly made out of matter and energy that we can't see or detect and that we have no idea what it is? Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about dark matter. To understand why the theory of dark matter was formed, we must first turn to the principles of classical physics. These explain the motion of objects, ranging from the trajectories of footballs to the orbits of planets in our solar system. By using classical physics, it's possible to predict the speeds of planets and stars in orbit. A simple equation relates these speeds to the distance at which the planet or star is orbiting and the total mass which it orbits around. Let's take the Earth as an example. The Earth is orbiting the Sun at a distance of approximately 150 billion meters. The Sun's mass is about 2 times 10 to the power of 30 kilograms, and g is just a number known as the gravitational constant. Doing this calculation shows that the Earth should move in its orbit with a speed of approximately 107,000 kilometers per hour. This matches the experimentally observed value. In fact, Classical physics can be used to accurately predict the speeds of all the planets in our solar system. On the galactic scale, a similar pattern is expected between the speed of stars and their distance from the center of the galaxy. That means we have a model for how the rotation curves of galaxies should look. Sadly, things aren't as simple as that. Research done by Vera Rubin in 1980 showed that the rotation curves didn't have the theoretically predicted decrease in speed with increasing distance. Does that mean our theory is wrong? Do the principles of classical physics not hold true? Perhaps Andrew can explain what's happening here. So we know what we should, in theory, see with galaxy rotation curves. Fast on the inside, but slow on the outside. But galaxies behave differently. And what could be an explanation? And why am I on a unicycle? Maybe one solution could be that the spiral arms of a galaxy act more like the spokes on a wheel. The stars further out from the centre travel faster than those closer to it. If that was the case, the rotation curve should look like this. But that clearly doesn't fit with observations. So galaxies don't rotate like a bicycle wheel and they don't rotate as if they have mass concentrated at the centre. So what's causing this rotation curve? The answer is dark matter. Let's try to see how dark matter can explain the observed rotation curves. We can use the equation for speed of stars in orbit around a galaxy to get some understanding of what's going on. Usually, the distance of the star to the galaxy center getting larger would imply the speed of the star getting smaller, but that isn't happening here. Rather, the speed stays constant. g being a constant means that we can't change it. The only other thing we can change then is the mass that the star is orbiting around. To keep the speed constant as the distance grows, the mass must therefore grow at the same rate. That means there must be more mass spread throughout the galaxy than we can see or measure. This mass is what is known as dark matter. It's the unseen mass that causes the speeds of stars to be as high as they are. So what is dark matter really? Dark matter only interacts via gravity. And unlike every other substance in the universe, it doesn't give off any light, heat or radiation. But we know that dark matter is the dominant form of matter in the universe. For every kilogram of regular matter, there's about 5.5 kilograms of dark matter. This means that dark matter makes up about 27% of the universe, with only 5% being regular matter. The remaining 68% is dark energy, but that's for another time. So what's dark matter made of? There are a few theories. Weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs for short, is one of them. These are particles that are smaller than atoms, but are so heavy our current accelerators, like at CERN, cannot produce them. Another is massive compact halo objects, machos, which could be black holes forming halos around galaxies. The reality is that we don't know what dark matter is made of, and experiments to find out are still ongoing. This all goes to show that even with all of our new discoveries, there's still so much we don't know. As always, from everybody here at Quantum Magic and Lancaster University, thank you so much for watching. Right. Oh, time to head on home. Oh, unicycle on grass, Andrew. After it's been raining. Good idea.
I don't know where I'm going. <laughs>